Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today's first reading comes from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, the first letter of St. Paul. And Paul is writing to the Corinthians who have become attached either to himself and some to Apollo, to Apollo because of his great eloquence, right? These natural talents that he had. And so in today's part of the letter that we're reading, St. Paul is teaching about the wisdom of the world, you know, natural gifts, eloquence, and all of that, those things that are impressive, and the wisdom of God. And he says, let no man deceive himself. And really, that's the first thing that we can learn from this reading is that it's possible for us to deceive ourselves. And that's why it's so necessary to pray and to observe the commandments so that we not deceive ourselves. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, I will catch the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. And so now let's just turn to Cornelius Alapide's commentary on this, which is so edifying. He says, if any man among you seem to be wise in this world, that is, if any man is proud of his worldly wisdom and eloquence, his rhetoric, philosophy, and earthly knowledge, and, th and thus comes to look down on others, then let him become a fool, that he may become wise. That is, a fool in the eyes of the world, but filled with humility and faith, and with the folly of Christ's cross. In God's sight, however, this is the only true wisdom, that is, the folly of Christ's cross. Since this world's wisdom is folly with God, and God's wisdom foolishness to the world, it follows that we cannot be truly wise unless, according to the world, we are fools. Unless, in spite of our greatness and wisdom with respect to the world, we submit ourselves like children, rather like fools, to the faith, discipline, cross, and obedience of Christ. And then he quotes St. Bernard, who goes to give the example of the Magi uh, as an example of those who became fools, right? The Magi, they were the three wise men. They had a lot of worldly knowledge, astrologers, the signs, and all of this. But they come in their humility and faith, led by the Holy Spirit, to follow the star that leads them to the crib of Christ, right? The infant laying in a manger, this poor grotto. And what do they do? They worship him as God and recognize him as the Messiah. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. God has rejected worldly wisdom. Why? First, because in and of itself, Worldly wisdom does nothing toward salvation. God is not impressed with talents and eloquence. And furthermore, it is often contrary to the faith, not only in speculative matters, for example, all who are merely worldly wise reject the mystery of the Most Holy Trinity, of the incarnation and death of, Son of, of the Son of God, as being impossible and incredible, but also in matters of practice and morals. For Christ bids us to love our enemies, whereas the wisdom of the world bids us to hate them. Christ bids us to overcome evil with good. Worldly wisdom says, return evil for evil. Christ proclaims, blessed the poor, the meek, those who mourn, hunger and suffer persecution. 
But the world says that the rich, those of high station, those who laugh, feast, and rule are happy. But it is writ written, I will catch the wise in their own craftiness. Right? God is wiser than all of this, and his will will not be obstructed. God catches the wise in their craftiness when he fulfills his will by the very means by which they astutely plan to reverse it. For example, when the brothers of Joseph, wishing to demolish his dreams about his future leadership, threw him into a pit and sold him as a slave into Egypt. What did God do? God, through their action, exalted him and made him ruler over Egypt and forced his brothers to do him reverence. Similarly, God overruled the wisdom of Pharaoh at the Red Sea, casting the chariots under the waters, of Saul and Achitophel on their attempts to destroy David were completely foiled. And so for us, let's heed the words of St. Paul and become fools in the sight of the world and place our humble faith and confidence in Christ and his cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.